Hi, first grade Guadalupe students. This is Mrs. Maldonado. I have a guided reading lesson for you. I also have a sight word game and a math lesson. So please join me. Okay, and for our guided reading today, boys and girls, I have a book. Uh, the title is Katie the Caterpillar by Pamela Chanko, and it's illustrated by Laura Ferraro Close. Katie the Caterpillar was tired of being little. She couldn't wait to be big, but what will I do when I grow up, thought Katie. She decided to ask the other insects that they were what they were going to do. What will you do when you grow up? Katie asked little Cicada. I will chirp all night, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. Also, boys and girls, I wanted to uh, point out two things. You're going to see some yellow. You're going to see some yellow boxes within our pages. Those yellow boxes are vocabulary words. Okay, there and each vocabulary word. I, I think, um, well, we know we went over our in our text features. They're bold, boys and girls. Bold means that they're dark print and so they could stand out in within the text. Okay, so our Word for that's bolded in our vocabulary word for this section is chirp. So what is chirp? Well, chirp is the high sound that insects and birds make. What will you do when you grow up? Katie asked little Bumblebee. I will make honey in a hive, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. What will you do when you grow up? Katie asked little grasshopper. I will leap from leaf to leaf, leaf she, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. So our vocabulary word is hive. What is a hive? Well, a hive is a home for bees. So we see up in the tree, we see the honey dripping from the hive. So that's where the bees live. What will you do when you grow up? Katie asked, little walking stick. I will use camouflage to look like a twig, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. What will you do when you grow up? Katie asked, little beetle. I will shine like a jewel, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. So if we look over here with the walking sticks, we have our uh, bold word within our text, camouflage. What is camouflage? Well, camouflage is a coloring or covering that makes an animal look like its surroundings. So the walking stick wants to actually look like a stick. And if we see them, that they are on a branch, so maybe they want to be look, to look like part of the tree. So um, it's predators won't get to them so he is going to use camouflage what will you do when you grow up katie asked the little ant i will cart huge pieces of food on my, to my anthill he said oh said katie i could never do that what will you do when you grow up katie asked little centipede I will use my legs to creep all around, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. So our vocabulary word for the ant page is cart. Okay, and cart means to carry. So the ants wanted to carry pieces of food. So what kind of pieces of food are they carrying? So we see one here carrying a, a cookie, uh, this one might look like a, a gumdrop, um, a strawberry, and this other one might look like a piece of cracker or chip or something. So the vocabulary word for the centipedes is creep. What is creep? Creep is to move slowly and quietly. We're going to creep slowly and quietly so they won't know that we are coming, right, boys and girls? So that is creep. Maybe when we want to surprise someone. What will you do when you grow up? Katie asked little firefly. I will glow in the dark, he said. Oh, said Katie, I could never do that. Katie was sad, 
I'll never be special like other bugs, she said. She just wanted to be alone. So she, so she built a little home. Then she crawled inside it. Okay, we, he, we see our bold word in this text is glow. So what does glow mean? It means to give off a little light. And sometimes we have things that, that glow in the dark. So that's what it means, glow to give off a little light. The other insects were worried about Katie. She's been in there so long, they said. Do you think she will ever emerge? At last, the insects heard a flutter of wings. It was Katie. She was all grown up and she looked beautiful. Wow, what a metamorphosis. You are a butterfly, the insect said. We could never do that. So we have a fancy word over here in bold, emerge. What does emerge mean? Emerge means to come out into the open, okay? So she was inside, now she's going to emerge. She's gonna come out, all right? And metamorphosis, we have metamorphosis in bold print over here in our text on page 13. What does metamorphosis mean? It means a big change that animals or people go through. Metamorphosis. So she was a caterpillar. She went into her cocoon and now she is a butterfly, a beautiful butterfly. That is metamorphosis because she went through a big change. So now we have our vocabulary meaning match and I am going to need your help for this. So we are going to read it together for number one. The high sound that an insect or a bird makes. What is that? A high sound that an insect or a bird makes. Okay, we see our word chest over here. We have all of the vocabulary words that we went over, all the vocabulary words that were in bold print. So the high sound that an insect or bird makes is chirp. Good job. So I'm going to put a number one there. Okay, because that is the word that defines the meaning for number one. Okay, number two, a home for bees. Where do bees live, boys and girls? You got it. They live in a hive. And here's the word hive. Okay, next, next definition, a coloring or covering that makes an animal look like its surroundings. A coloring or covering that makes an animal looks like its surroundings. So when we want to blend in with our surroundings, it's called what? Okay, we have metamorphosis, creep, glow, emerge, or camouflage. Which one is it? You are correct. It is camouflage. We want to camouflage when we want to blend in and look what like whatever it is our surrounding is, right? Okay, we have a word to carry. Remember the ants, they did what with the food? Metamorphosis, creep, glow, cart, or emerge. Correct, they, to cart means to carry. They were carting the food, the little pieces of food. So we're gonna put a number four for cart. Okay, good job. All right, next word, number, next one, number five, to move slowly and quietly. Remember when we want to surprise someone, remember the centipede wanted to move slowly and quietly. Is it metamorphosis, creep, glow, or emerge? Good job. It is creep. So we're going to put a number five here for creep. All right, and number six, number six. Number six reads, to give off a low light. To give off a low light. Remember the, fi the firefly? Uh, Katie asked her um, what she was going to do, and she said she was going to what? Metamorphosis, glow, or emerge? Yes, you are correct. 
glow means to give off a little light and sometimes we have things that also glow in the dark to give off a little bit of light in the dark. Number seven, to come out into the open. Is it metamorphosis or emerge? Metamorphosis or emerge. What happened when she came out of the cocoon and she was now a, a butterfly? She, what did she do? She, to come out means to very good emerge she emerged out of the cocoon all right number eight a big change okay so remember the butterfly she was a caterpillar she turned into a cocoon and then she turned into a, be a beautiful butterfly so that process is called what Yes, it's that big, long word, metamorphosis. So we're going to put a number eight here. Okay, so there's all of our um, vocabulary words that we had throughout the story. We matched them with their definitions. So we can now uh, use them in a sentence. We can write sentences with them. Or when we hear those words, we already know what they mean. Okay, we're moving on. Okay, so now we have fill in the sentence. We are going to, again, use all of the vocabulary words that we just learned in our story. And now we are going to use them to complete a sentence, to fill in a sentence. Okay, so let's go with number one. And boys and girls, you can help me read or read along with me. My tadpole turned into a frog. What a... What's that big long word, boys and girls, when they turn from one thing to another, like the butterfly that was a caterpillar, then a cocoon, and then it turned into a beautiful, butter, beautiful butterfly. It is metamorphosis, and I'm going to see if I can fit that long word in here. Metamorphosis. All right. This is an O. Okay. All right, metamorphosis. So I'm going to put a check mark there because we already used that word. Also, boys and girls, if you wanted to do this with me, I'll wait a couple of minutes so you can go get a piece of paper because you are going to ha uh, have a math lesson next or in the sight word game that if you want to also do it on your own in a piece of paper, you can. So go ahead and go get a piece of paper or something and something to write with, a pencil, pen, crayon, whatever you have is perfectly fine. Okay, and for this one, if you want to join along, go ahead and write the numbers one through eight. You're not going to write the sentences, you could just use the words. And then we can revise our knowledge together, okay? Revise the knowledge means that if we have to change some answers around, if you work ahead, then when I go through it, we'll review it and make sure that you have the correct answer in the correct place. Okay, so let's move along. Uh, those of you that have a pencil and a paper, um, okay, let's start with number two. Crickets often blank at night. What is that noise that insects and birds make? Crickets often blank at night. Yes, chirp, chirp. Okay, so C-H-I-R-P chirp okay number three green fish hide in seaweed that is called what is that word called boys and girls that when we blend into our environments that we want to hide remember in the story the walking stick wanted to do that what is it that it, when we change colors or coverings it is Yes, camouflage, okay, C-A-M-O-U-F-L-A-G-E, that's the answer for number three, camouflage, to blend into our environments, to change our covering, or to uh, blend in with the color. 
Okay, number four. Fireflies blank in the night sky. What did the little little firefly said say to Katie when she asked her what she was going to do? She said, I am going to what? And fireflies do this in the night. Excellent. Glow. G L O W. That's our answer for number four. Glow. And boys and girls, as I am writing these words. We can see blends, we can see our vowels, we can see um, different things that we use when we are working on our uh, phonetic skills. Okay, so number five, Gina had to blank a big box of books all the way to school. What did she have to do? What did the ants do with the little pieces of food? What was that vocabulary word? It's another word for carry. Very good. Cart. Gina had to cart. C-A-R-T. Cart a big box of books all the way to school. That means she had to carry. Okay, cart is a fancy word for carry. Okay, number six. I saw an ant blank across the kitchen table. Okay, so she moved slowly and quietly. What was, what was that vocabulary word? To move slowly and quietly. I saw an ant blank across the kitchen table. Excellent, creep. And we see two, two uh, vowels here, double E. So that means that the first vowel is going to say its name and the second vowel is going to be silent, creep. Excellent. <clears throat> Excuse me, number seven. Susan was so sick that she did not blank from her room for the whole day. Remember this word, to come out? Remember um, when we the butterfly um, came out of its a cocoon? So the butterfly what? What was that fancy vocabulary word that means to come out? Is it emerge or is it hive? Very good. Emerge means to come out. E-M-E-R-G-E. -E. So Susan was so sick that she did not emerge from her room for the whole day. That means that she stayed in her room because she did not emerge. She did not come out. Okay, number eight. The bees flew in and out of their... What is that home for the bees called? Yes, it's called a hive. H-I-V-E. And we also see two vowels in this word, boys and girls. And actually, one of them is the silent E. Remember, we it's silent, so we do not make that sound. But that silent E has a very important job to help the I say its name. So that's why it says hive. We do not hear the um, E. It is silent. But we do hear the long I sound. Give your give give yourself a kiss on the head, boys and girls. You guys did kiss in the brain. Kiss that brain because that brain is working so so hard. Did an awesome job. Learned all of those vocabulary words. So next time you hear them, you know what they mean. Or if you already know what they mean, maybe you can use them a little bit more in your writing or in your vocabulary. Okay, so now we have some vocabulary questions. And you can do these on your own. I'm not going to spend too much time with them um, because you are going to think about these questions and you are going to write your sentences for each one of these questions. Now, another thing I wanted to remind you is that when we are writing our sentences, remember to use an uppercase letter. Okay, we start all our sentences with an uppercase letter. 
Remember to use your finger space between your words. And also, boys and girls, these are questions. So we are going to be writing statements. So that means that we're going to have a period at the end. A period at the end. That means stop. So when we write a sentence, when we stop, we put a period at the end. So the first question is, pretend you are a butterfly about to emerge from your cocoon. What will you do when you go outside? So what would you do when you go outside if you are a butterfly about to emerge? So remember that vocabulary word emerge means to come out. Okay, so answer that question. Remember, start with an uppercase letter. Start your sentence with an uppercase letter. Don't forget your finger spacing. And at the end of your sentence, it's a statement, a period at the end. All right, number two. What kinds of animals can creep? Make a list. Okay, so think of animals that move quietly and that move very slowly. Okay, make a list. See how many animals you can come up with. The animals that creep. Okay. All right, so that's not going to be a sentence. It's going to be a list. So you're going to write as many as you can. Think of animals that can creep. Maybe your family can help you with this list. See who can get more animals that creep. All right, so let's go to number three. Bees live in hives. Can you think of, uh, of some other animal homes? So think of where some other animals live, boys and girls. They live in different homes. All the animals have different homes. I can think of, of um, a bird. Where do they live? They have a nest, right? So think of other animals that maybe you might have a pet at home or know of somebody that might have a pet. Where do they live? I'm sure that they have a special home, okay? So think of other animals, perhaps out in the wild. Where do those animals live? So think of those animals, write the animal's name, and then write their homes, okay? For example, we have bees live in hives. Birds live in nests. Think of other animals and where they live. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to move along to our game here. So get your pencils and your papers ready. And uh, let's get ready to have some fun with our sight word scrabble. All right, so let me give you the instructions for this one, what we'll be doing. Okay, you are going to have three letters, okay? So these are the three letters to put together to make a sight word. Okay, let's see if you can figure it out before I give you the answer. Okay, so all of these words are sight words, boys and girls, and they're only three letter words. So you are going to look at the bottom on the, at the red words, and the red words are going to give you clues to figure out what the, sight, what the words that are all mixed up together at the top, okay? What words are they? What are the sight words that are mixed up together? All the letters. Okay. For the first one, we have L, A, L. So this doesn't have an A, doesn't have an L. This one doesn't either. This one has an A, but does not have any L's. Uh, this one has an A, no L's. This one has an A, no L's. No A's or L. Oh, boys and girls, I think I found it. Were you able to find it before I did? You probably did. All right, so I am going to circle it, and then I am going to write my word, my sight word, because, boys and girls, we want to learn how to spell our sight words, just like we learn how to read them. We want to learn how to spell them, too, because we use them in our writing, okay? Okay. Some of us have dictionaries to help us spell words, but it is much better to already learn how to spell them, boys and girls, because sometimes we might not have that dictionary with us. So let's practice spelling and reading our sight words. Okay, so A, we have an A. I'm going to cross the A out. Then we have an L, 
there we go, and another L, and that is our sight word. What sight word is that? Good job reading it, all. So that is the sight word, all. All right, so let's go to the next one, E-R-A. Let's see, this one has an E, but does not have an R, does not have an A. This one does not have neither of those words. This one has an A, but does not have an R. Oh, this one has an E, this one has an R, and this one has an A. So I think it's this word. So let me spell it right under it to see if it matches, okay? If I use all of the letters that are all mixed up together to make that word. Okay, A, I'm gonna cross out the A, then we have a R, cross out the R, and finally we have an E, cross out the E. So I used all of those letters. So yes, that is the sight word that was all mixed up together, was all scrabbled up. So what sight word is that? Can you read it for me? You are correct. It is the word R, sight word R, A-R-E. Okay, let's go to the next one. T-E-A, okay, T-E-A, this one does not have a T, no T, oh, this one has a T, and it has an E, and it also has an A, so this could be it. I'm going to circle it, okay, so the first word is an A, the first letter, I'm sorry, then our, our next letter is a T. And finally, our last word is an E. Can you read that word for me? Yes, it's eight. It's the sight word eight. Okay, so let's go to the next one. B, T, U. B, T, and a U. Let's see, I do not have a B or a U. Do not have those there. Not here. I do not see a B. I do not see. Oh, here's a B. And there is a T and there's a U. So I think I found it. Okay. I am going to write the letters in order to make our sight word and then we can read it. First word is a, first letter is a B. Second letter is a U. And last letter is a T. What word is that? Yes, it is the word, B, the word but, okay, B, U, and a T. There we go. Next uh, letters, next group of letters, I, D, D, I, D, D. Well, I'm going to start over here. No I's, no D's. No I's, no D's here. No I's and D's here, nor here. Oh! I think this is it. I have an I and two D's. I am going to circle it. And then I am going to spell it right under the words that are all, the letters that are all mixed up and see if it makes that word, that sight word that I'm looking for. D, I, and D. D, I, D. What word is that, boys and girls? What sight word is it? Yes, it's the word did, did, okay? Our last one for this um, row, A-E-T, A-E-T. We have, we do not have an A here, do not have an A here. Oh, here's an A, but I do not see a E. No A's here. Oh, here we go. Here is an A, here is a... E and there is a T. Okay. First letter is a E. Next letter is an A. And last letter is a T. What sight word is that? Yes, it's the word eat. Eat. Okay, let's go to our second row, boys and girls. You guys are getting good at this. I think you are finding those. Uh, sight words before I am. You're getting good at this game. Okay, so our first letter is a E, then a G, and a T. E-G-T. Here's a E. 
no G, no T, no E here, no E here, no E here, no E here. Oh, it's the last one. All right, so we're going to spell the G first. And then we have the E. <clears throat> Last, we have the T. What, word, what side word is that? Yes, it is get. Get. Very good. All right, our next um, group of letters, W, E, N. Okay, for our first one here, we have a W. We have an E and we also have an N. Whoops. Let's see. All right, let's go back to our sight word here. All right. So we, it was the first one, so we're going to go ahead and write, write it. Okay. N. We're going to cross off the N. E and our next last letter W. Okay, what sight word is that? Yes, it is new. Good job, new. All right, our next one O W N. O W N. Okay, I'm going to circle that one. We got it. N E W. O W N. We have an O, we have a W, and we also have an N. Okay, N O and W. Okay, so what word is it? Yes, it's the word now. Now it's our sight word now. Okay, our next one U R O. U R O. Okay, this one doesn't have a U, does not have an R, uh, does have an R, but does not have an O. U R O. Okay, it's this one. Okay, so O U R. What word is that? What sight word is it? Hour. It's the sight word hour. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. N R A. Okay, so we have an N, we have an R, we have an A. Yes, we found it on our first try. Okay, R A N. Okay, what word is that? What sight word is it? Yes, it's the word ran. Ran. All right, let's go to our last one, and it's our last word, so it must be this one. S, A, and W. What is that sight word, boys and girls? Yes, it's the sight word saw. So let's review our sight words. Okay, first one, new, new. Next one in the first row, eight, eight. Ran, ran, all, all, did, did, saw, saw, now, now, are, are, our, our, but, but, Eat, eat, and get, get. All right, boys and girls, so those are our vocabularies for our, our, I'm sorry, our sight words for our sight word Scrabble for today. Now we're going to move on to our next section, okay? And it's math time with Mrs. Maldonado. All right, so if you do not have a piece of paper and something to write with yet, go ahead and get something to write with and a piece of paper so you can follow along with our math. Okay, so how many blocks are there? Okay, first of all, we are going to connect this with something that we already know, boys and girls. Um, this reminds me of a tense frame. 
Okay, do you remember how to draw a tense frame? Okay, well, let's practice drawing a tense frame together. Okay, so we are going to write it, we're going to draw it right beside it. So you are going to draw a rectangle. Draw a rectangle, okay? That means two long lines, two long sides, and two short sides. Okay, then in the center, we are going to draw a line just like that. Same size as the top and the bottom. And then we are going to draw, I tell my students, we're going to draw four lines. Okay, four lines that will give us equal parts. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's how I teach my boys and girls how to draw a tense frame because that gives us an equal amount of 10. Okay, so let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's our tense frame. Now let's look at the blocks. It's telling us how many blocks are here. And I did the tense frame first, boys and girls, because when you see blocks like that, they're referring to a group of 10. So that means we are going to count by 10. And if there's more than 10, then we are going to count on. Okay, so let's count and just double check our work. Make sure that there are 10 because we have not counted them yet. I'm just telling you there are 10, but we always have to double check our work in math. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing that we did with the tens frame. We're going to put the numbers inside the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Also, boys and girls, we could have counted by five. There's five at the top here in this row, and there's five at the top here. So if we know how to count by fives, we have five, ten, and if we had five, five uh, boxes below the ten, that would be what? Yes, that would be 15 if we're counting by fives. But in this case, we are counting by groups of 10. So how many blocks are there? Yes, there are 10 blocks. Okay, so how many blocks are there? So now, boys and girls, it's giving us the group of 10 at the bottom, and then it's giving us the other group at the top. So let's count and make sure. Okay, let's count and make sure that they're 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So yes, yeah, so we know that it's 10, okay, in this group. Now let's count the, the boxes at the top. 1, 2, 3. So if we were going to write an equation, boys and girls, how would we write this equation? We have the 3 first. So we would write 3 plus 10 equals what? So we're going to count on. We're going to put the big number in our head. So the big number is what? Yes, the greater number or the bigger number is 10. Then we're going to put 3 in our hand. So what comes after 10? 11, 12, 13. Okay, so our answer is 13. Also, boys and girls, we could have written this different ways, okay? We could also write, uh, we could write 13 equals 3 plus 10. We could also write 10 plus 3 equals 13, okay? So there are different ways that we can write it. So when there's an equation, boys and girls, um, we can do a little triangle like this, okay? Going up like a little mountain, okay? And the bigger number, the greater number goes at the top, and then we have a 10, and then we have a 3. So we are going to be using those numbers, okay? For if this was um, to write it different ways. Okay, so just um, wanted to show you that. 
All right, so how many blocks are there? Again, they're giving us the smaller number first, okay? So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so this one has them all. So we know that this is what? Yes, we know that that is 10. So nine plus 10 equals what? We can count on. So which one, which number is greater, the nine or the 10? Yes, the, the 10. So we're gonna put the 10 in our head and then we're gonna count on. What comes after 10? We have our nine fingers, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Also, boys and girls, I wanted to show you a number line, okay? We are going, I'm going to start with a 10 because the 10 is the greater number. And I'm adding, so that means that I need to move forward, okay? How many jumps am I moving forward? Yes, I'm moving forward nine jumps. So help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm going to put my close circle there because that's going to be my answer and that's where I am going to stop. So I am going to count on using a number line. So 10, what comes after 10? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So we got the same answer. That means we double checked our work and the answer is 19. So how many blocks are there? Yes, 19. All right, so now we have the blocks again and we have the group of 10 at the bottom. So that means that it wants us to count um, to put the first one, this first in our um, equation, one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five, how are we gonna write the equation, boys and girls, five what? Yes, plus what? 10, very good. And then we are going to figure out our answer. We're gonna use the number line, and boys and girls, the reason why we do not start with zero is because we want this to be an efficient strategy. We don't always have to uh, want to use numbers that we're not going to use in for our problem that we want to solve. So we start with a greater number if we're adding, that way we have to jump less steps, okay? So the greater number is 10, and how many jumps am I going to move forward because I'm adding? Yes, we're gonna move forward five. Five spaces, five jumps. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm stopping here, that's going to be my answer. Okay, so what comes after 10? 11, 12, 13, 14, and our answer is 15. Now, let's double check our work. We're gonna put 10 in our head because that's the greater number and five in our hand. Okay, so what comes after 10? 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So yes, our answer is 15. We double checked our work. So how many blocks are there? Yes, there are 15 blocks. Okay, to the next one. Again, we have 10 at the bottom. We have our groups of 10. Okay, so 10, I'm sorry, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So seven plus eight equals what? Oh, I wrote a seven. This is an eight. I'm sorry. This is an eight. Okay, seven plus eight equals. All right, so let's draw a number line. We have our 10. And then we're gonna move how many steps because we're adding, we're moving forward. Remember when we add, we move forward. Yes, we are moving eight. So we have 10, 
Okay, we start with 10, and then we're going to move forward 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so what comes after 10? We have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And boys and girls, I'm using the number line just to give you some practice with the number line. We could easily count on the blocks, okay? But I want you to use other strategies because when you go to second grade, boys and girls, you are going to be required to use that number line. And it's better to practice. If, if you're having a little bit of trouble with it, it's better to practice now, okay? Um, also, it's always good to double check your work to use more than one strategy. All right, so let's move right along. Okay, so now it wants us to draw 11 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. Okay, so we're going to draw blocks showing groups of tens and ones. So remember that at the beginning of the math lesson, I showed you how to draw a tens frame. So we are going to draw a tens frame because it's more than 10. So I am going to be using my tens frame. Okay, so you are going to draw a rectangle and draw a straight line going to the middle. Okay, cutting it in half. And then how many lines do we draw in the center? Yes, we are drawing four lines. Okay, help me count. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now let's count and make sure that we have ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we do have ten boys and girls. That's why it's called a tense frame. But guess what? If we just draw and we make lines in the cent in the middle and don't um, use four, we're gonna get more than ten. So it will not be a tense frame. That's why I tell my students to always draw only four lines going down, okay? And then the line that goes across horizontally. All right, so now, but it wants us to draw 11 blocks. We have 10 already, but we need 11. So 10, 10 plus what is going to give me 11? 10 plus what is going to give me 11? Okay, so that means we need one more. Okay, 10 plus one. Because we have 10 and one more makes 11. 10, 11. All right. Okay, let's move right along to our next one. It says draw 20 blocks showing groups of 10s and 1s. Okay, so... Let's let this is a tricky question, boys and girls. Are we going to have okay? Are we going to use ones or could we use two tens? Okay, so let's count by tens 10, 20. So, what does that mean? You're right, we can use two tens frames instead of using 10 ones, okay? Or we could also use Tw uh, one tens frame and ten ones, okay? But I think it'd be easier if we use two tens frames that make up 20, okay? So let's draw our tens frames. Okay, so we have our rectangle and our line going straight across through the center, our horizontal line. Okay, and then vertical going up and down. How many do we draw? Yes, we draw four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, we draw four lines, and that is going to give us our tens. Okay, ten blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so we have 10 here. All right, so we have 10 plus what equals, we want 20. 
okay? So we said that if we counted by tens twice, we could, that would make 20. So let's draw another tens frame, okay? So another rectangle. We're gonna draw another rectangle. Okay, I'm gonna give you a minute to draw your rectangle and then draw a horizontal line going straight across. And how many lines do we uh, draw going up and down um, vertically? Yes, four. One, two, three, and four. And then we know that that's 10. So 10 plus 10 equals 20. Good job. Okay, now draw 14 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. Okay, so we're gonna draw our tens frame our rectangle and our line going straight across and then four lines going down one two three and four and that gives us ten okay i'm just going to write the numbers just so you can see just for visual but that makes ten so ten plus blank equals fourteen so we have 10. How many more do we need to make 14? Well, let's count on, boys and girls. We have 10, okay? And, and then we're gonna stop when we hear 14. We have 10 in our head. And then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So how many more do we need? Four. So 10 plus four. So I have to draw four ones. There we go, so 10 plus four equals 14. Now we have to draw 12 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. So remember our tens frame, one, two, three, four, and we have 10 plus blank equals 12. So what comes after 10? Remember, I'm going to stop when, you hear tw when we hear 12. 10, 11, 12, so that's how many more? Two more, okay? So I am gonna draw two ones because I have 10 here and I have two here. That's my equation, 10 plus two equals 12. Draw 17 blocks showing groups of tens and ones. So we have our tens frame. How many lines do we draw going down? Four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so 10 plus blank equals 17. So I have 10, then I am going to stop when I hear 17. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, so that's what? I have seven fingers up, okay? So 10 plus seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have 10 here and I have seven here. 10 plus seven equals 17. Okay, boys and girls, so now it's your turn to log into Moby Max. You're going to go into www.mobimax.com and you're going to click on the orange sign-in tab right here with the big blue arrow that I am showing you. And step two, you will come to this screen. So you're going to come to this screen that you see here and you're going to make sure that you're in as a student. So you see here, it says as a student on the top right tab. And then you're going to enter Guadalupe Center in the school name box, okay? It says school name, type Guadalupe, space, and then center, and you're gonna click on find, okay? Then it's gonna show up, you're gonna see, for city, it's gonna say Immokalee, and under school, it's gonna say Guadalupe Center. Click on that. Once you click on that, make sure that you are in as a student again, um, and enter your student number for the username and the password. Okay, so that's your lunch number. 
lunch number for username, lunch number for password. They will both be the same. You should also see Guadalupe Center for your school, okay? Once you see that, you have your lunch number for username and password, click on the sign in green box at the bottom right here. Okay, then you are gonna go to step four. You will see the student name at the right top corner, which is right here where I'm moving the cursor. You do not see a student name right here because I'm just using this just to show you. And then once you go in there, you're gonna see your name. You're gonna select the green math icon and you're gonna start your lesson. Everyone's lesson will be different, boys and girls, depending where you are. So have fun.